If you're considering plastic surgery, you might consider Dr. Perez. He is one of the leading board certified plastic surgeons here in the Tampa Bay area. Here's a little bit more on some of his procedures. Well, for rhinoplasty, um, <clears throat> there's basically two, two approaches. Uh, one approach would be an open rhinoplasty and the other one is a close. Um, whichever approach is used, it depends on uh, the patient's anatomy and the problem that is to be corrected. I would say most, uh, uh, at present time, most plastic rhinoplastic surgeons will use uh, an open approach to most of their uh, tip uh, work. Seeing a rhinoplasty looks very painful. Is it truly painful? What's the healing process like? Well, surprisingly, rhinoplasty is not a, a very, very painful procedure. As I, I could see with patients. I mean, there are other procedures that are more painful, but mm -hmm. yeah, rhinoplasty is really not. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, but I, I didn't. Ha I have never had a rhinoplasty, but I see my patients. They don't complain too much of uh, pain. It's basically discomfort, and it has to do with. Um, even though they're swollen the next day after rhinoplasty, they could be very swollen and they could be uh, bruising around the eyes. But, um, but pain per se is not really a major characteristic of, um, of this procedure. Uh, the infracture in rhinoplasty, which requires an osteotome and a mallet to basically is to break the bone, to make it narrower, uh, that's not for everybody. Not every uh, rhinoplastic patient needs that. In, in, uh, but it's, a, it's part of the rhinoplasty to narrow after you have reduced, um, after the surgeon have reduced the dorsum if you want it, if it's too wide or basically if, if it's too lumpy, you reduce the dorsum and then you, usually those patients require an infracture, which basically, as you describe, is an osteotome and breaking the bone. The patient is, usually, is under general anesthesia or on heavy sedation, so he's not, he or she will not feel anything during the procedure. Now afterwards, uh, as any surgery, um, medication and and uh, mostly it will manifest as being very swollen. Not, not so much pain. There. Is there anything a patient can do to assist the healing process? Yeah. Um, well, at the beginning, during the first, three, uh, during the first seven days, um, patients, uh, usually they have a splint, either internal splints, doyle splints, and externally. And during that time, heavy exercising is not recommended or any exercising, just um, that, and to keep the head elevated, perhaps the first two nights after surgery, because then that helps with the swelling. Just sleep up with a few pillows up, propped up the head. And, um, and uh, I would say taping after, for the first three weeks after surgery. Taping the nose, it helps decrease in swelling. Well, swelling and rhinoplasty take, could take up to a year. It takes a long time. You see the results. Patients see results about three weeks. Three to uh, three months, you could start seeing what, uh, how your nose is going to look. Uh, about, I would say, be anywhere between three weeks and three months. Um, before that, it's quite swollen. Doctor, what is the earliest age a rhinoplasty can be performed? It's usually about two years after menarche. In women and girls, menarche is the first uh, time of menstruation, the first um, menstruation. So it will be about, roughly about two years after for, for females. And for males, I would say around 16 years of age. Well, rhinoplasty as any surgery, um, in this case, as any um, aesthetic uh, procedure, uh, usually my pa they should be uh, patients that are healthy uh, with no significant medical problems. Um, patients who um, 
whether it's in a structure problem or whether it's just basically um, uh, aesthetic, uh, the looks, they don't like the look of the nose, uh, providing the patient is um, healthy and uh, um, a good candidate for this procedure would be somebody who has no major medical problem. Health Matters will be right back.